Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to release the tension on the parking brake cable on any Chevy pickup that has an automatic parking brake tensioner. In fact, this procedure will apply in general to any vehicle that has an automatic parking brake cable tensioner. And if you're curious, this particular vehicle is a 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Now, before I show you how to release the tension, I'd like to go over some common misconceptions of the automatic tensioner and how it actually works. The sole purpose of the automatic parking brake cable tensioner is to minimize the slack on the parking brake cable when the parking brake is released. That's all it does, that's all it's intended to do, it does nothing more than that. It has absolutely no effect on the adjustment of the parking brake shoes. In the case of the Silverado, the parking brakes are adjusted by automatic star wheel adjusters that are located in each parking brake shoe assembly. The way the automatic star wheel adjusters work is through means of a spring that sits inside the gullet of the star wheels. When the brakes are in their retracted position, the spring has a bit of an arch to it. When the brakes are activated, the spring straightens out and turns the star wheel. So in essence, the parking brakes are adjusted automatically every time you use them. And if the parking brakes are really far out of adjustment, all you need to do is pump the parking brake pedal a bunch of times until the parking brakes are at their proper adjustment. And there's no need to worry about over adjusting the parking brakes because the spring will just skip over the top of the tooth when the parking brakes are at their proper adjustment. And of course the star wheels will only work automatically if they're properly lubricated at regular intervals. Basically every time you replace the rear disc pads. Otherwise you'll have to crawl under the truck and adjust them manually with a screwdriver. Now the way the automatic parking brake cable tensioner works is even more basic. It is just a big clock spring. Now the automatic tensioner I'm showing you here is in a Mustang GT. Because the tensioner is fully enclosed in the Chevy and you can't see the spring. And the way it works is really simple. The tension of the clock spring is significantly less than the tension of the springs in the parking brake assemblies. But of the correct tension to maintain the proper slack in the parking brake cables when the parking brake cable is released. That's it, it's that simple, and it's maintenance free. And now that you know exactly how it works, I'll explain how to release the tension. Okay, to release the tension on the parking brake cable, the procedure Chevy tells you to follow is to pull back, Have you need two guys. One guy is gonna get under the truck and pull back on the uh, cable. All right, like that. So he'll pull back on the cable here. Then you have another guy under the dashboard. Let me get over there. So here you go. Obviously, your parking brake is fully disengaged, fully in the up position. And you got to get under the dashboard. Let me see if I can get the camera. So it shows what you need to see. As you can see, I'm under the dashboard. Here's the emergency brake release uh, foot pedal. And here's the, this is actually the body for the tensioning spring. And in, in the plate there, there's a hole. And right there. And so you hold the Phillips screwdriver in that hole. And as that guy pulls back on the cable while he's under the truck, you have to push against the screwdriver and when he pulls it back the right amount another hole on the inside will line up and you'll be able to push the screwdriver in further. He can then release the cable and the parking brake cable will now have its tension released. So that's the procedure. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard to do but it takes two people. Okay, I'm back under the truck, and now I'm going to show you how to release the parking brake cable by using a method that only requires one man to do it. The nice thing about it is that this one-man method takes about the same amount of time to do as the two-man method, and since it's only one man doing it, it actually takes about half the amount of time, at least in man hours. What you'll need is a flat bar, a C-clamp, and maybe a block of wood if you're worried about messing up the paint on your chassis. There's a loom here that will get in the way of the flat bar, so it'll make the job a lot easier if you remove it. 
Okay, so to remove that loom, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket. The chassis is kind of rusty. Obviously, you'd want to put penetrating oil on there. Okay, so now the loom is removed. You can just slide it out of the way. You don't need to take it off. Now, what you want to do is just take your flat bar and place it so that it's the cable goes in the nail groove just like this and in this case I'm using a block of wood because as a because uh, I don't want to scratch up the paint but you know that's your option and then get your C clamp So get everything lined up nice. And now the next step is just to slide this whole setup, pull this whole setup back in order to relieve the spring tension. So I'm just gonna get in the position that I can do that. I might block the camera a little bit, but here's what it is. We loosen up the clamp. I got the clamp about where I need it. And now I'm just going to pull everything back. Okay, it's, that should be good. You pull back as far back as you can or as you feel is necessary. And then, re then tighten the clamp. And that's it. You can see I have a lot of slack in the cable. Okay, a lot of slack here. You don't need slack here, just here. Now, here's the added benefit. You see this clip? They're a bit of a pain to remove if you need to remove this cable from this clip. The only reason why you would need to remove this cable, of the, cl the clip, is if you're replacing the cables. All you need to do is relieve the tension in order to disconnect the cables at the end on the parking brake actuator. But if you did need to remove, if you did need to replace a cable, it's a little bit of pain. There's a special pair of pliers that that actually have a similar setup. They have a a, a groove, but then they have like a a thin portion here that fits in this uh, slot and you squeeze them together and it will push the end out. But in this case, now that I have that clamp there, just make sure it's good and tight. Get the clamp set up. You can see all the way through there, okay. So you'll take a screwdriver and a hammer. Just put the screwdriver right on that, uh, on the edge of that clip there, uh, on, the, uh, on the end of the cable, the cable end there, that swaged end, and give it a shot with a hammer. And there you go. Uh, mine came out pretty easy. Usually they're a lot harder than that. That's free. Now, you can remove the cable. There you go. And it's that easy without that special tool. Now, since I'm not going to be uh, replacing the cables, I'm going to put this back in again. All right, that's it. 
reason why this is actually coming out easy, I didn't even need the hammer. Look at that. I'll bring the camera closer. Now you can see there's a reverse dimple in the clip that prevents the swaged cable end from shifting. And as you can see, that reverse dimple is a bit worn down on the side I just removed, probably because it's been removed multiple times. I guess I could, if you look from the back side here. If I really wanted to, um, right here. See that, uh, the dimple here? It's a dimple here. On the other side, it's a protrusion. I could take a center punch and uh, push that down a bit. Uh, you know, take you know, put it against an anvil, and uh, pound that dimple down a little further again, because that dimple has been uh, is kind of worn down on the you know the protrusion on the other side. So that's why that came out so easy. But I'm not going to bother because the automatic cable tensioner itself does a pretty good job in preventing the cable ends from shifting. But it is because of that dimple that you'll need a hammer to pound it through. Normally, that dimple prevents this end from being able to move forwards. That dimple keeps it captive. In this case, it's not an issue because it's worn out. But now I'm just going to put that back in and pull back on the cable and keep my tension released. And I'll just leave this uh, like this for the duration of the job. Once you've completed whatever work you had to do on your parking brakes, in order to reintroduce tension, all you got to do is remove the clamp and your flat bar that was holding the slack as you can see right here I have plenty of slack and this is tight but once I release this um, this will pull forward and take up all the slack so all you need to do is go under here and remove this clamp Okay, so there you go. So now I got the proper amount of tension. That's what it's supposed to have. And that's automatically set by the, uh, the tension on that parking brake tensioner. It's an automatic tensioner. Now here, I'll put this uh, loom back in. And I will put a little bit of nevices on it, anti-seas. Bolt. And actually, where it makes contact here, what that'll do is that'll prevent that from rusting where it bites in. There you go. Start it by hand. And I'm just going to tighten it down. Now, the torque here is not critical. If you want a torque value, that bolt's about 5 sixteenths. It's metric, but it's about 5 sixteenths. So 30 foot pounds. But I'll make it good and tight. You don't want to strip the threads. That's good. And there you go. Done. So that's all. The tension is back on. The proper tension now is on the parking brakes.